What was that? Oh, just your little note there. Ah, the note was a, that was unintentional note, but uh, it was a G for those uh, wondering what that was. <laughs> Could you give me an A? Uh, no, I want to. Uh, Good morning to you. Welcome to our kickoff Sunday. Uh, many of us have our jerseys on, which is very nice. Uh, let's stand and, and first I just want to have a moment of silence for this, all the victims of September 11th, just for a minute. Lord, may all those that lost their lives that horrible day rest in peace in your eternal love and help us get back to how we all acted the day after, Lord, when we all just came together, no matter what, our, what we believed in, we acted as united Americans, Lord. Bring that, help us to bring that spirit back. Amen. Please stand. I'm going to sing a medley of some of the, I, I think, some of the best... Um, Best hymns. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made.
Turn around and give someone the happy fingers. Hey! Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out today. Morning. It's good to see you all here this morning. It is kickoff Sunday, and I, I want to start by, I walked in this morning, and I kind of forgot that Donna told me she was going to come and decorate, and uh, so I got in this morning, I was like, oh, this is great, so I want to thank Joe and Donna. I think they came this week and, and put up the, the football decorations just to celebrate. We usually do a breakfast, and we usually have Sunday school starting, and you know, we can't do some of those things right now, so I do appreciate the efforts made to just make it feel a little bit uh, like a typical kickoff Sunday, and I appreciate seeing all of you here and, and having your sports teams on, and I mean, we can't all like the best team, but that's all right. Um, it is good to have you here. Uh, also, along with that, I got up front, I saw the decorations, like, it's going to be a great day, it's a beautiful fall morning, I love the weather, and I walk up front, and then up here on the podium is a beautiful little Raiders mask, just for me. Oh, I'm upside down. Just for me. <laughs> Uh, that uh, Donna Liptock had made for me and surprised me. So uh, I want to thank her for that, too. Um, obviously, we're not having Sunday school yet, um, but uh, we're, we're always, as we say every week, making evaluations on how we can best, uh, best practices for church. Um, we are starting nursery care today. Today, during second service, will be our first Sunday since the shutdown of having child care again. Uh, the ad board discussed that at our board meeting this past Tuesday and decided that it was... Uh, that we could do it safely, and, and uh, we wanted to provide that so that parents with young children can feel like they can come back to church. Um, so I'm excited for that step in the right direction, that we're going to be able to have you know, parents back here and kids have a place to go and, uh, during church. Um, but again, that'll be just for second service for now. We're going to start doing that only for second services. Uh, also, I wanted to update you on the railing outside. We still don't have a railing up. Uh, I kind of told you that the company that poured the steps and the ramp they were not able to come back and finish because their schedule, they didn't get it done the day they were scheduled to, and now their schedule's so full they can't. So I did reach another company, and they're coming this week. So hopefully next Sunday when you come, the railing will be there so that you don't feel like you're going to walk off the side of the porch there. But uh, the railing is getting done. I just wanted to update you on that. Um, also, some prayer requests that I want to, unless, am I missing any other announcements? No. Thank you. Uh, Prayer requests, um, obviously the, the ones that are already on our list, there are people that are dealing with, with treatments, there's people that are dealing with uh, a need for healing, there's people that are getting over being ill, uh, and there's people that are preparing for surgeries. We want to keep those folks in our, our prayers. I know Linda Kenworthy is getting ready for surgery. Um, she gave me the date. Do you think I remember it? September 18th. September 18th. Way to go, Jerry. September 18th, uh, so next, this, uh, this week, she's having surgery. So we want to pray for uh, Larry and Linda Kenworthy as they prepare for that. Um, also, I wanted to uh, update you. We're missing a couple people up here this morning. I mean, we do have the A-team, but, but we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're missing Sandy. We're missing my mother. Um, Sandy is homesick, so we want to pray for Sandy. Um, and also, uh, my mother, they were on vacation this past week, and on the last day of their trip, she was trying to get in the, in the pool uh, with li the, the kids, and she slipped, and she kind of fell, and they had, like, steps in the pool, and she kind of fell and hit her tailbone on the steps pretty hard, and she is very sore and stiff and um, not feeling 100%. So, uh, just want to pray for healing for those situations and add those to our prayer list as well. What else? I'm at a loss for words. Mark it down. <laughs> Mark it down. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. And you know what? I'd like us to pray together the Lord's Prayer as we close our prayer time this morning. Uh, I, and that was just on a, a whim. I don't have the slides prepared for that. I just, um, if it's in your heart, just join me in that prayer as we close our prayer time this morning. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the beautiful sunny morning that we have to get up and, and the, the coolness and the crisp of this morning reminds us of the change of seasons and reminds us of your goodness and having a plan for how all things will work together. Lord, help us as your people be a part of that plan and working together. It just seems like each and every week there's more things that we hear about that can that can tear us 
apart and can pull us downward. And that's not where we want to live, Lord. We want to we want to live with joy in our hearts because we serve a risen Savior. And we want to live in a place where we know that we care for one another. Help us to be your hands and feet and reach out to those who maybe don't have your Holy Spirit living in their hearts. The only way real change will ever occur is if we allow you to penetrate our hearts and change us from the inside. So help those of us that have already accepted the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, let us not be afraid to share it. You've called us to do better than that, to, to not keep this wonderful gift to ourselves, but to shine your light for all to see. So give us the encouragement we need. It's not easy to do that. Help us to not be afraid. Lord, we lift up those that are part of this church family that can't be here today, those that are dealing with situations. There are those who are dealing with illness that are trying to get better. There are those that are dealing with injuries. There's those that are dealing with scheduling treatments. God, we lift these situations up and we place them at your feet because we just get to a point where we feel like we don't know what to do or we feel helpless. And that's when we need to remember that we are not alone, that we are not helpless, that our strength comes from you. Our strength and peace and comfort, they come from a, a faith, an unwavering faith in you and your abilities, not in our own abilities and strengths. So remind us of those things. We give you thanks that we have the opportunity to gather together here freely, that we can worship our God with, with joy in our hearts this morning for your goodness. We give you thanks for the gift of friendship. That's what we're going to talk about today, Lord, what your word says about being a true friend. We give you thanks for those people in our lives that you've blessed us with. We give you thanks for the best friend we'll ever have, your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
children were here, I'd excuse them. Today we're talking about true friends and how true friends are honest friends. If you have your Bibles with you or your Bible app or whatever it is that you prefer to read scripture on, I encourage you to turn to Galatians 6 and we're going to read the first two verses together where it says these words for us this morning. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word for us today. I found this interesting poem or reading that I want to share with you this morning. It says, give me the avowed, the erect, the manly foe. Bold I can meet, perhaps return his blow. But of all the plagues, good heaven, thy wrath can send. Save, oh save me, from the candid friend. Candid, by definition, means frank or outspoken, open and sincere. This poem speaks about an aspect of friendship which most of us would probably rather do without, but which each of us truly need desperately. And this is the subject for our text today. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. That's from Proverbs 27, 6. We are told here that only an enemy will ignore issues that we need to face. A true friend, on the other hand, will confront us with truth that we need to hear. They will be honest with us because they want to help us. They're willing to stir us up if it means they're going to help us. I think about my brother. He'll be here second service, so I'll be, he'll, he'll hear this sermon too. But I think about my brother. Brutally honest person. And I emphasize the word brutally honest. Even to the extent that sometimes it can be hurtful. But I know deep down that he loves me, and that's why he's so honest with me. Now, sometimes he could certainly work on the manner in which he presents his truth, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the sermon, how we are called to actually present truth to those that we care about. So let's take a few minutes to think about this aspect of real, true Christian friendship. A true friend is honest. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. A true friend is willing, if need be, to confront you with the sometimes painful truth. They're willing to tell you what you need to hear in order to help you. But having said this, I think it is important to understand how, how a true friend confronts you with the truth that you need to hear. A true friend shares their honesty out of a spirit of concern, not a spirit of criticism. And sometimes we fall into that trap 
of, yeah, we're, you know, we're a true friend and we want to tell you what we really think, but we're not doing it out of a spirit of concern that we really want you to get better. We're doing it to criticize something that a friend has done. They seek to follow Paul's instructions, a true friend. In Ephesians 4.15, when we read these words, that we are to speak the truth in love. Therefore, they will combine truth with tenderness. You hear that? Truth with tenderness. You see, truthfulness without tenderness is to be calloused. If you're just brutally honest, but you have no tenderness and love and compassion, you're calloused. Tenderness without truth is to be cowardly. You don't ever want to tell your friends the truth because you don't want to hurt their feelings, so then you're cowardly. But truthfulness with tenderness is to be Christian. One of the most Christ-like things we can do is to tenderly confront our friends with truth they need to hear in order to help them. Eighty-four times the gospel records Jesus saying, I tell you the truth. He was honest, even when it was something that the person he was talking to didn't necessarily want to hear about themselves. Jesus is a true friend, wouldn't you say? Think of what he's done for each and every one of us. Jesus didn't hesitate to speak the truth, and neither should we if we are to be true friends also. In fact, Scripture tells us that it is our duty to tell the truth to each other. Ephesians 4.25 says, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. But in seeking to share a helpful truth with a friend, we must also be tender. It is good to apply the golden rule when it comes to our relationship with others. Of course, the golden rule, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Here is a simple rule of thumb guide for our behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. And then grab the initiative and do it for them. Would you want somebody to tell you if you're walking down a path you shouldn't be? Do you want a true friend to pull you aside and help you and be like, hey, what are you doing? I mean, I think... We'd be hurt a little bit. We don't really want to hear that about ourselves. But deep down, I think every one of us would sit here and say, yes, I would want a real good friend that I trust, who I know loves me, to steer me on the right path if I've lost my way. Well, if that's how you feel, then you need to be that friend to them. Do to them how you would have them do to you. I need to ask, how do you want to be treated? How do I want to be treated? And then I need to apply those insights to how I should go about confronting a friend with a helpful truth. I am sure that there are at least five ways. I'm going to talk about five, but there's probably more than five. But there's at least five ways in which we all could agree on that we would like to be treated by other people. And as we reflect on these next five little principles or ways that we'd like to be treated, let's apply them to this business of tenderly, lovingly confronting friends with helpful truths. So the first thing I think we can probably all agree on is we all want others to appreciate us. Anybody in here not want people to appreciate them? We, we would like to be appreciated, right? The deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. That's by William James. When you seek to confront a friend with helpful truth, express that you first appreciate them for who they are and the friend that they are. They need to feel appreciated before you hit them with that truth. The second thing we want others to do is we want others to listen to us. Does anybody like being ignored? We like when people listen to us. When confronting a friend with a helpful truth, we need to be willing to listen to them. There's a difference. There's a difference between listening and hearing. Listening is wanting to hear. Let your friend know that you want to hear his or her thoughts and feelings about whatever the issue is you're talking about. You're not just here to condemn them. Hear them out. You will listen to them. You're here to be their friend. The third thing that we would all like is we want people to understand us. We need to listen to our friend as we tell them what we believe he or she needs to hear in order to understand their perspective. To not demonstrate a desire to understand another person is to communicate unconcern for them. You hear that? To not demonstrate a desire to understand where they're coming from or how they got to this situation. To not demonstrate a desire to understand is to communicate that you don't really care. It's to communicate unconcern. You must seek to understand before you seek to be understood. If you show them you're not willing to hear them out, why would they listen to what you have to say? 
The other thing we'd like all people to do, I think we can agree on, is we'd like people to forgive us. Anybody that's without sin can throw the first stone, right? We all need to be forgiven. If that which you are led to confront your friend about maybe even has to do with a personal offense, something they've done that's hurt you personally, do not approach them about that issue until you can do so forgivingly. Until you're ready to forgive them, don't call them out on what they need to change because we all want to be forgiven. They're going to need to be forgiven by you if they're going to make things better. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. You know, we're told several places throughout the Bible that we're to forgive as we've been forgiven. We are forgiven unconditionally over and over and over. And over. Is that how we forgive people that wrong us? How often, do we, how often do we wrong God? How often do we disobey his word or we do something out of selfish or vain conceit? Or, you know, every day. I do it every day. And God forgives me each and every time. And that's the way he's called us to forgive other people. The way that you've been forgiven through the gift of Christ. A person will much more easily deal with their own mistakes if they know they have your forgiveness already. Think about that. If you did something wrong to me and I start out by saying, hey, it's okay, but can we talk about it? Don't you already feel a little better about talking about it? If you know I'm already okay with it and I forgive you and I still love you, let's work on it. A person needs to know that you as their friend has already forgiven them. Now let's work on it. Ernest Hemingway, in his short story, The Capital of the World, tells a story about a father and his teenage son who lived in Spain. Their relationship became strained, eventually shattered, and the son ran away from home. The father began a long journey in search of his lost and rebellious son, finally putting an ad in the Madrid newspaper as a last resort. His son's name was Paco a very common name in Spain. The ad simply read, Dear Paco, meet me in front of the Madrid newspaper office tomorrow at noon. All is forgiven. I love you. As Hemingway writes in his story, the next day at noon in front of the newspaper office, there were 800 Pacos, all seeking forgiveness. All of us want to be forgiven. Remember that when you confront a friend with a truth that they need to hear. we got to do so forgivingly. And the fifth thing that I think all of us can agree on we want others to do is we want others to encourage us. David Smith, author of The Friendless American Male, writes about Queen Victoria's impressions of her two most famous prime ministers. Of William Gladstone, she said, When I am with him, I feel I am... With, I am with one of the most important leaders in the world. On the other hand, she confessed that when she was with Benjamin Disraeli, he made her feel as if I am one of the most important leaders in the world. One made her feel like she's with somebody very important, and the other one made her feel like she's very important. Gladstone provoked her admiration while she considered Disraeli her true friend. Always seek to help your friend think good of themselves. We're not here to destroy them. We're here to help them if we are really coming at it from a, an area of concern. Remember this. God did not bring you into this relationship with whoever this is that you need to talk with. God did not bring you into this relationship to see through one another, but to see one another through. God did not bring you into this relationship to see through each other, but to see each other through. Which brings us to the reason why a true friend is honest with those that God has brought into his or her life. A true friend is helpful. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. I'm going to keep saying that. In being honest with others, a true friend will want to help them in one of three ways. He will want to help his friends receive the best. A personal and growing relationship with God. How do we do this? By pointing them in the way of God. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Think about this. Would a person or a true friend, if they knew the cure for a deadly disease, but they didn't tell you about it, 
Would they do that if a true friend knew the cure of a deadly disease that you had and they kept it to themselves? Would that be something that a true friend would do? Absolutely not. They would want to share that with you. Likewise, you and I who personally know the one who said he alone is the way and the truth and the life, we have an obligation to point others to him and encourage them to enter into a personal and growing relationship. We have the cure for a very deadly disease called sin. How selfish would it be for us to not share it? So, a true friend wants our friends to receive the best in a relationship with Jesus Christ. A true friend also wants our friends to believe the best. A perspective on life that only God can give. A true friend will urge those that God has brought into his life to believe in the word of God. The word which tells me who I am in Christ Jesus a young man was kidnapped from his home in Africa and taken to America on a slave ship. After months of experiencing rotten food, disease, the stench of human waste, and seeing the death of many around him, this young man was placed on a platform to be sold. He stood proudly with his chest out and shoulders back and chin up and eyes looking straight ahead. The crowd stirred as they quickly noticed that this man was different from the rest. But why? The slave trader explained it when he said, This boy happens to be the son of a king in Africa, and he cannot forget it. A true friend points others to the truth of God's word so that they might never forget that through Christ they are the child of a king. We take for granted, I think, sometimes that we know that truth. But there's so many people walking around this world that don't believe that. Don't believe that they could be a child of, of God, that he could love them or accept them. We need to teach that. And the last thing that we should want for our friends is we want them to not only receive the best and believe the best, we want them to achieve their best. Potential which God alone helps us to achieve. A true friend will urge those that God has brought into his or her life to do the will of God. So we want to receive Jesus Believe the word and do God's will. That's what we should really want for each other. So how do we do that? Well, we point them to Christ. We point them to the pioneer of our faith. Three boys were challenged to a race in the snow. Instead of the winner being the one who arrived at the finish first, the father said that the winner would be the one who arrived at the finish with the straightest line. The first boy looked at his feet to see his steps if they were straight as he traveled. The second boy looked at what his other brothers were doing to see how they were walking. And the third boy kept his eyes on his father at the finish line and never took his eyes off. It was the third boy who had the straightest line and won the race. We must encourage our friends to fix their eyes on Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. How? Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. A true friend is one who lifts you nearer to God. Think about that. A true friend is not someone who's going to tell you what you want to hear. A true friend is not the person that says, hey, I think if it makes you happy, you should do it. I'm sorry, that's not a real friend. A true friend is the one who lifts you nearer to God and encourages you in your walk of faith and challenges you when we struggle and presents truth to you in love. Remember, Proverbs 27, 6, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. There's two perspectives I want you to take away from this message this morning. Number one, if you are the confronter telling your friends hard truth, remember to do so out of care, not criticism or judgment. And remember to think about how you would want to be treated or told about this issue if it was you being told. That's one perspective I want you to take today. The other one would be if and when, I should say, you are the one being confronted. Be slow to become defensive, as we often do. And remember that God's word instructs us that a true friend is sometimes, they're sometimes hard to hear words 
can be trusted. A true friend's sometimes hard to hear words can be trusted. It's those people who only tell you what you want to hear that should be considered an enemy. Because if someone really cares about you and loves you, they will share the truth with you, even if it's hard to do so. So take one of those two with you today, I hope. Are you being a true friend to those that God has brought into your life? May we all be so fortunate to be blessed with true friendship. And may we have open ears to hear what God has placed on our friends' hearts to share with each one of us. Let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks once again for this day, the opportunity to come and worship you with our friends. The gift of friendship is such a blessing in our lives and the relationships you've given us, the people that we, we can be ourselves with and, and we can be open and honest with and we can laugh with and we can enjoy time with. God, it's a wonderful gift to have friendship. We give you thanks that you knew that it was not good for us to be on our own and so you gave us the gift of relationships. Help us to carry out your word and how it instructs us we are to be true and faithful friends. Let us never hold on to bitterness or anger or malice, but rather let us be compassionate and caring and tender and loving, but also truthful. And Lord, help us to understand that you might put someone in our lives to put us back on the path you want us on. We easily stray. Help us to be open and willing to hear the words of our truest friends if you've put something on their heart to share with us. Lord, we give you thanks that you love us so much that you had a plan to send your son to save us, to call us out of darkness. Help us to strive each and every day to live our lives the best way we can so that we might live a life worthy of the wonderful gifts you've already given us. Help us to remember, as we say often, it's about progress each and every day, Lord. Remind us of that, because we forget. Sometimes the mountains seem too big for us to climb, and we want to just give up. But that's where we need your voice to be heard in our hearts and our minds, telling us, reminding us that you can do anything. We can do anything with your help and that it's about progress. We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for these folks here that are worshiping together with you. Thanks for loving us, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love hearing your message every week. It's just, what a great way to, oh. <laughs> You messed up Sandy's thing there. But I'm telling you, you as a, me. I'm telling you as a friend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I knocked that stand over as a friend. Yes. No, really. It's just I hope you feel refreshed every week to, to be here and to be amongst everybody. And and what a gift that God has given us his Holy Spirit, you know? Like you know when Holy Spirit guide you, you know, let the Holy Spirit be in us at all times. Thank you for being here this week. Keep praying that things will get better and more people will feel safe to come out. I know you all do. And um, keep praying for Keith and members of the members of the team. Let's stand and sing all the people said amen. Two, three, four. <laughs> If you are lonely, feel afraid, you're not the only, we are all the same, in need of mercy to be forgiven.
rich or poor Well, it don't matter Weak or strong You know love is what we're after We're all broken But we're all in this together God knows we stumble and fall And he so loved the world Microphones, it must be kickoff Sunday. Yes. Hey, thank you for being here to worship this morning. I hope that you're glad that you got up and you came out to do so. I hope that if you do plan on watching football today, you enjoy yourself. I hope all your teams win, unless they're playing my team. <laughs> and uh, I, I trust that uh, God will go with each one of us and encourage us to be good, faithful, truthful, and loving friends. Thanks for being here this morning. You are dismissed. And all the people.